Good morning, Community Schools of Frankfurt. I'm Fire Chief John Kirby with the Frankfurt Fire Department. With me today, I have Lieutenant Scott Freeman, Firefighter Ennis Becerovic, EMS Captain Russell Sheets, and Lieutenant Ryan Weaver. Today, we're gonna to be talking to you about fire prevention. Um, every year, we come into your schools on Fire Prevention Week, and this year, through the pandemic, this is the way we're gonna be communicating with you. I want each and every one of you to pay close attention to what our firefighters have to say, because at the end, there might be a test. Now I'm gonna turn this over to Lieutenant Scott Freeman, and he will begin our fire prevention program. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Kirby. And as he said, my name is Lieutenant Scott Freeman, and I'll be doing the first section today of your fire prevention. We're gonna start off with maybe the most important thing of all is the emergency contact number in Clinton County. There's just three numbers, it's short and sweet, and I hope you all know it. But if you don't, please repeat with me. The number is 911. One more time, everybody. 911. Like I said, three short numbers. I hope everybody knows it and I hope it's review. But if you don't, make sure you memorize it because if you need an ambulance, a fire truck, or a police officer, that's the number you call. One more time 911. Now, about 911. It is the emergency number, and for that reason, you should never use 911 just to call somebody to talk to a firefighter, talk to a police officer, talk to the ambulance personnel. The only reason you should call 911 is if you think you have an emergency or you know you have an emergency. Why? Is it because if you call 911, what's going to happen? You're going to get police, fire, and EMS to your house. Once they find out you don't have an emergency, who do you think's in trouble? You're right. You are. So please, only dial 911 if you have an emergency. Another reason not to do that is you may cause somebody that has a real emergency to wait before their call is taken. Now, more with some numbers. And the second very important thing you need to know is you guys need to know your address. For example, mine is 37 East, County Road 180 North. Both of my children know their address. It's very important. Why is it important? When you call 911, it's extremely important to know your address so you can let the dispatch know so they can get to your house just as fast and quickly as they can and safely. So remember, if you don't know your address, please go home and let mom and dad know so they can work on it with you. If you do know it, maybe help your brothers and sisters memorize it or maybe just keep reviewing it so you know it very, very well. Now, there's a third port portion of my speech is about smoke detectors. With a show of hands, how many of you have smoke detectors in your house? I hope everybody raised their hand, but if you didn't, please know that you can get free smoke detectors at the Frankfurt Fire Department five days a week in the office. Smoke detectors are so very important for fire safety and prevention of uh, life and, and injuries. Now, another thing, if you have smoke detectors, please tell mom or dad to check the batteries. If you have a smoke detector with bad batteries, it's just the same as having no smoke detectors at all. So please, test your smoke detectors at home, make sure you have smoke detectors at home, and tell mom and dad to check the batteries. Lieutenant Ryan Weaver is going to let a live uh, smoke detector off so you guys can see what one sounds like. If you have mom or dad check your smoke detectors and they make that sound, the test is good, that means your smoke detector is still functioning. If he does that and there's no sound, that means you either A, have a defective smoke detector or you need to change your batteries. And again, you can always come get one for free at the Frankfurt Fire Department. Now, if for some unforeseen reason you do have a fire in your house, and 41 firefighters in Frankfurt hope that you don't, but we do have house fires. If you have one, it's so very important that you and your family discover an escape plan. What's an escape plan? That is the safest and fastest route out of your house you can get in an emergency. So get with mom and dad this weekend. That's another big assignment of yours, to get with mom and dad or grandma and grandpa this weekend and make an escape plan if you don't already have one. If you have one, get it out and review it and make sure you know it. Escape plans are so very important because in times of emergency, you're gonna be in a panic situation and you need to be able to get out. Once you get out of your house in the case of an emergency, you need to find what's called a safe place, whether it be a large tree, your neighbor's front porch, the swing set away from the house. The safe place is, works for a couple of reasons. One, it allows all the firemen that show up to know that you're out of the house and safe and it lets everybody get account for who's supposed to be in the house. Now about that safe place, if you're in your safe place, let's just say, unfortunately, your house has caught fire. You've gotten out of your house and you're in your safe place. Should you ever go back in the house to get, let's say, your favorite toy? No. How about your brother and sister? No. 
grandma and grandpa? Nope. As bad as you want to go in and save them, that's our job. That's what they pay us to do, and we will do that. Once you're in your safe place, you stay there under any circumstances, no matter what. Stay in your safe place, okay? Now, if you have a fire at your house, again, we hope you don't, but if you do and you can't get out, obviously there's going to be smoke. So the way to prevent and help yourself out in the smoke is to get low and go. So you get low and go to the safest place in your room and make as much noise as you can. Scream for help as loud as you can and firefighters will come and save you. Please get low and go. Go to a safe place and or if you can see a window that's on the first floor or a door to get out of, get low and go out of your house to your safe place. Now I'm going to turn it over to firefighter Russell Sheets, excuse me, EMS Captain Russell Sheets and he's going to go through stop, drop and roll. Hello students, I am EMS Captain Russell Sheets. Right now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, what you should do if you're around an open flame, near a campfire, a candle, even um, if you happen to be in a house fire and you have a piece of clothing that catches on fire, what you should do in that case. Many of you have heard the term stop, drop, and roll. And we're going to say it again. Everybody say it with me. You stop, you drop, and you roll. Here we're going to have a, a, a firefighter actually demonstrate that right now so that you can physically see it and want to have one of us do it. All right, students, so now we're going to talk about how we're going to stop, drop, and roll. So if you notice that a piece of clothing is on fire, the first thing that you're going to do is stop, you're going to cover your face, then next you're going to drop to the ground, and then proceed to roll back and forth until the fire is out or until someone comes for help. Good morning, kids. My name is Lieutenant Ryan Weaver. I've been a Frankfurt firefighter for about 16 years now. And my job is to talk to you guys about safety with matches, lighters, stoves, and fireworks. So it is very crucial that you guys, as a young age, do not play with matches and, and lighters. Uh, it's very intriguing for kids and adults to, uh, to find lighters and see fire. It's intriguing. It's pretty. But it's also highly dangerous and can hurt you for the rest of your life. So the best thing that I can say for you to do is to leave matches, lighters, candles, and fireworks alone. Um, you know, fireworks can hurt you. It's something for adults to show you and to, to watch as a child. Uh, the other thing is, is stove tops. Um, as a child, it's about the right height for somebody to get hurt. So if your mom's cooking supper, don't go up and look at the stove. Don't touch the stove. My kids have all been taught to leave the stove alone and to stay away from it. All right, so now we're going to go over why we wear what we wear and what we are wearing and what its purpose is. So when we first get ready, our pants and boots are all set next to the fire truck. We step in them, we pull them up, pull our suspenders up. So we wear leather boots with protective toes and a steel shank in the bottom to uh, protect our feet from stepping on nails. Uh, the leather helps, uh, it's fire resistant. Then our pants are like the coat, and I'll explain that in a minute. And then he has his hood he'll, uh, that he would put on over that next. Next, he'll put his coat on. And what I want you guys to watch is watch his skin disappear. When we get all dressed up, we don't want any skin showing. So we have three layers of this coat. We have the outer layer, which is our protective layer. It's fire resistant. Uh, the, in the inside, we have two different layers on the inside. We have this outer shell that protects us from the steam. Um, so when we put water on the fire, uh, steam happens, which can burn us just as much. Then we have this inner layer, which is a thermal layer. It keeps us, our body regulated. So if it's hot outside, it keeps us cool. If it's cold out, it keeps us warm. And it also keeps us, when we're in a fire, from getting uh, too hot. Next, he's going to put on his air pack. When we go inside, we have to take good air with us. When the fire's going on, it's hot, it's smoky. Um, we cannot breathe that smoke or we'll be in trouble also. So we take a bottle of air inside with us. And it's connected to our face piece and it feeds us oxygen. We can, we can work inside of a fire for about 30 minutes. Okay, kids, this is what I sound like without a mask on. 
a little bit, you're going to hear what I sound like with my mask on. So Nate pulls his hood up, make sure there's nothing exposed, and he's going to use his helmet. So our helmets have two helmets combined into one. So inside, there's a small bicycle style helmet that if he was to fall through a ceiling or a floor, um, it, the, the top helmet would break away and it would leave his head protected still. And also, when we're inside Fight and Fire, uh, we're crawling just like what we told you guys to do. And so what that is, is like a bumper for us. We don't know what's inside of homes. We've never been in, in a home that you guys live in. If your house is on fire, we find the couch. We find the walls, we find the TV, we find everything with our helmets because we're crawling first and we can't see our hand in front of our face. We're trying to find where the fire's at and that's what we use to get, get there. It also keeps debris from falling down on our heads and hurting us. Okay, so he also has gloves on. Do you guys see any exposed skin? He looks like he's ready to go inside and fight fire. So this is what we wear. This is our ensemble. This is what keeps us safe. It's all designed through years and years and years of research and trial and this is what we wear it's not fireproof it's fire resistant it helps us do our job either saving people uh, or keeping us safe when we're putting the fire out inside so now he's gonna put his uh, air on all right so now he's in his got his air on he's ready to fight fire if you guys can hear him breathing you want to say something? You guys remember what I sounded like before? This is what I sound like now with air and a mask on. So what our, what our goal here today is we want to show you what we wear and what we look like because we do not want you to be afraid of us. We, we look different in our attire, but we're not scared. We're there to help you and protect you. So please don't hide from us. That's very crucial that you don't hide from us. We're coming in to, to save you and to do our job, not there to hurt you or, or harm you. So. This is what we look like. Uh, Ennis um, is ready to fight fire now. Hello students, so now I'm gonna to talk to you about what you should do if someone is hurt or sick. As we had already talked about, the number that you're gonna to need to call is 911. And on the other end of that line will be a person that's gonna to have to ask you a few things that you're gonna to need to know. You're gonna to need to be able to answer them. Who is hurt? How did they get hurt? and are they inside the house or outside the house. Also, if you can, you need to go home and ask your family members or whoever you live with if you have a first aid kit. At that time, you should be able to know how to use the kit and uh, help the person who is hurt or sick the best that you can. We're gonna just briefly talk about uh, COVID as well. As you can see, I'm currently wearing a mask. That's one thing that, we're, that we can do that we are cur currently doing. We're gonna, we can uh, sanitize our, our, our hands, especially when we go out into a, a, a pu public place. Once you leave that place, you can sanitize your hands. Also, go home and wash your hands. You can uh, stay as far apart from family and friends that you can, uh, at least six feet, um, as, especially when you're outside of the home. All of these things that we can do to help prevent the spread. Okay, kids, remember I told you there will be a test. I was only kidding, but I am sending you home with some homework. I want you to go home and talk to your parents about everything our firefighters discussed with you today, about 911, about what your address is, your phone number is. Uh, I want you to talk to them about smoke detectors. Look up on your ceilings to see if you do have smoke detectors. And if you don't, remember, all you have to do is call the Frankfurt Fire Department and we will uh, set you up with free smoke detectors, and uh, if you need us to come and install them for you, we can even do that. Um, talk to your parents about um, a safe place to meet in case your house does catch on fire. One thing I want you to know is um, our firefighters, speaking on behalf of the Frank Fire Department, our firefighters really miss coming to your school this year for Fire Prevention Week, and hopefully next year we're able to get back into the school. Um, but we did want to reach out to you today and send you home with a message and to give you a message of fire safety because it could save your life and it could save your parents' life. And one more thing, you guys, we have a collaring contest going on and I'm hoping that you all are collaring the pages we sent over to you. Our firefighters 
they are going to be the judge of these uh, coloring uh, pages and we are going to send uh, we're going to uh, send a gift bag I don't want to tell you what it is it's a surprise but we're going to give a gift bag to the first place uh, caller in each grade that's participating in this contest have a good uh, evening and please go home and talk to your parents about what you heard today from our firefighters thank you